Welcome to FCRB TV, late night edition. It's, uh, what is it, August 14th. It's like 11 p.m. Eastern Time, United States. Um, and uh, I'm coming at you tonight because I was supposed to make a video after the first round of matches in the Premier League. Arsenal beat Newcastle 1-0. I'll talk about that a little bit. Talk about Arsenal's transfer window, the work they've done. Um, and then talk about Man United, Chelsea, Christian Pulisic's debut. And then the Super Cup took place today, which Liverpool won on penalties after a 2-2 draw. Watch that. So we'll talk about that all that real quick as we get ready for round two of the uh, Premier League matches. We'll talk about VAR a little bit probably because it was I thought it was a mess with... Um, Man City and uh, West Ham. But, you know, uh, I guess we'll go back to uh, Arsenal and um, Arsenal and uh, Newcastle and Arsenal's transfer window. I, Martinelli's a great addition, nice young player. Uh, the young lads that have come through in terms of Nelson and Willock. They're going to be great for us. Um, Eddie Nketiah is another, even though he's been he's been loaned out to Leeds and he scored on his debut for them. Um, those guys are going to be great for us. I obviously I, I think I'm looking forward to see what Nicholas Pepe can do for us. I think he'll be good. Um, uh, sad to see uh, it will be go, but you know somebody had to go. I would have preferably would have been Mkhitaryan, but. Um, nobody wants to buy him, so <laughs> we can't move him on. Um, so, uh, and then uh, what else? And then um, who else do we get? We got um, uh, Danny Ceballos. I already talked about Danny Ceballos. Excited about him. And uh, we got uh, Tierney, the left back from Celtic. I think he'll be good for us. And then um, David Luiz is not good. I don't know why Gunas are out here celebrating D D David Luiz coming in. I don't think it's going to be good for us. He he lacks discipline. He can't play in a flat four. He can only play in a three three center back system because the other two center backs clean up all his, he, they put out all his fires. The guy's not good. We saw him at PSG when Suarez ripped him apart. When Brazil lost 7-1 to Germany in the World Cup semifinals, David Luiz was playing center back. Yeah running out of position all the time. I mean, when he was at Chelsea, yeah, he can pass a ball and he can hit a free kick every now and again, but that's that's not good enough. That's not enough. That's not what we need. That's not what we need, people. That's not what we need. Um, I think that, like, you know, we, 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 we do need a center back, but that's not who we needed. We didn't need, we did not need David Luiz, who's 32 years old as well. We needed to really spend some money and get a center back, but... The our Arsenal front office has, you know, bamboozled us and got us to think that, like, you know, they've got us a center back. But, nah, you know, Mustafi still may go to Monaco before the window closes for the other leagues. But I'm not big on, on David Luiz. I'm not. It's, it's, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's nothing to be excited about, in my opinion. But hopefully it proves me wrong, but I doubt it. Because he's old and he's already, he's already, and and listen, it's it's, it's another, it's another um, mole in the Arsenal system. Czech was one, I think. Czechs, uh, the 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 experiment, the experiment with Czech was a, was a bust. Don't think that was good enough. I, I don't think it was good. And then now he's going back to Chelsea. Now they've sent us David Luiz. He's going to do the same thing. Not going to be good enough. They're probably going to be a, a head scout or under 14s coach for Chelsea. So it's not good enough. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. Um, but you know, going to the game at Sir James Park, we uh, we came out with a, 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 a makeshift squad, I would say, because um, a lot of lads are injured. There's a situation with uh, Kola and uh, and uh, Mezut. Um, you know, they're not able to travel with the squad. You guys all know about that. So those guys are missing. Laka was on the bench. Um, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, Tyranny's not available. Bellerin's not ready. Ch uh, Rob Holden's not ready. All coming back from injury. 
Um, Pepe is coming back from the African Nations Cup, so he did not start the match. So I thought that Willock was very good against Newcastle. I thought that um, Reese Nelson is very good. Reese Nelson can play inside as well as on the width, which is very impressive. Um, so that's really great for us. Um, Maitland Niles had a very good game, and, and Callum Chambers really had a good game too. Um, I did not think that he was ready, but clearly as he has improved by going out on loan to Fulham, and I think he can fight for a place. He's definitely ahead of Mustafi in the pecking order, and um, when Rob Holding comes back, he's going to have a fight on his hands because Chambers might really put up a fight to keep that spot, and David Luiz is also there as well, but man, as I said, I'm not big on David Luiz. So Chambers was good against Newcastle. He worked well with uh, Socrates. Um, Nacho was always reliable. I love Nacho Monreal. Love the guy. I think he should have been captain instead of Shaka. And I tell you what, Shaka and you guys have all. This is all late a little bit, but this is my two cents. And Shaka and Mkhitaryan, they give the ball away too much. Shaka wears the captain's band. He runs and he points to his head. Hey, use your head. We just took the lead. Da -da -da -da. He does all that captain stuff, right, to look like he's being a great leader, but then he turns around and gives the ball away. <laughs> it's like, dude, lead by example. Stop talking and lead by example. Stop giving the ball away. So I thought that Nacho should have been captain, but, you know, um, Shaka captain Switzerland as well, so maybe that's another reason why he gets to be the captain. Um, but he was okay. Um, the, goal was, the goal was a good goal we scored, but I think that... Um, it was, it, was, it was a tight game. We were hanging in there. Good result for us because we didn't have our strongest team out. We got three points. But the person who we can thank for getting the three points is not Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, but it's actually Steve Bruce, the new, the new Newcastle manager. Because did you see what he did? The game is on the, on the knife's edge. It's, it's nil-nil. It's tight. It can still go either way. And he takes off John Joe Shelby, who was I think it was laboring a little bit. But he doesn't bring on another central midfielder. He takes off John Joe, brings on Jetro Willems, the Dutch international, who's a left back by trade, can play left wing back as well. And then he puts him out there and tries to slide Matt Ritchie into the middle, who is not really that guy in there. He's a wide guy as well, likes to whip balls in. So now their team becomes unbalanced, right? It becomes unbalanced, and Richie, who was really doing a good job on that left-hand side, was forced to leave that area, and then Jethro Williams is trying to find his bearings out there. Uh, a, a, a loose ball was played. A loose ball was played, and it was intercepted by Maitland Niles. He runs down. Now Newcastle's all out of sorts, out of position. They leave last year's co-leading goal scorer unmarked. Balls whipped in. Settle. Golasso. Arsenal win the game 1-0. And that all comes from Steve Bruce <laughs> freaking making a bad, bad substitution. Thank you, Steve. We'll take that all day long. So that's what I saw from that. Um, but uh, overall, it was a good performance by Arsenal. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we hung in there. And like we said, it wasn't our strongest side, but we got three points. So it's going to be a fight, yeah. It's going to be a fight for, for Arsenal this season. I think that uh, we still have a lot to prove and to, to still have a lot to show that we can compete for top four and, and, and you know, the FA Cup and, and things like that. Even the Carabao Cup, we can try to go for that because we got some young lads who can go in there and really make a push. Um, then you go to the, the big game at Old Trafford and um, United beat Chelsea 4-0, but the score was really flattering. United, this guy Solskjaer is 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 not a really good manager because all he he knows one way to play, counter attack. That's it. The man can't teach nothing else. He can't set his team up any other way. They got counter attack opportunities because Chelsea came to outplay them, and Frank Lampard was right. Even though Frank, I think, picked the wrong squad to begin the game, the wrong eleven. He his his side outplayed United for the first hour of the match. Tammy Abraham hit the post. Uh, uh, Emerson hit the crossbar. They were all over United, but the United would just counterattack with Rashford's pace, got a penalty, then they got another one over the top, made it 2-0, and that was and that was the game. And then and, and, and Chelsea's inexperienced 
and Chelsea's inexperience hurt them without Ungolo Kante in the team, without um, Rudiger, without um, uh, Willian. They they lacked experience, you know. Without Giroud starting the game, and we'll get to why that's all, you know, all makes sense in a second. But yeah, I thought that Chelsea were in the game and they just were unlucky not to 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 get something out of it to, to at least be level at some point after United took the lead to the penalty. Um but United, you know, they just played on the counter. I think Chelsea's midfield was better. And I'm a big guy. I'm I'm really big on midfield. I'm really big on a team that can move the ball around and try to create things. So and I think Chelsea did that better than United. Uh so it was four nil. Um all their goals were counters, basically. All their goals were counters. So, yeah, they they all were. The penalty, they won it from a counter. Then Rashford scored again, counter. And then uh, Anthony Marshall scored on a counter. And then the, the Daniel uh, James, that's the Daniel James, is that his name? The Yeah, the Welsh lad. He scored on a counter, too. They were all counters. So, well, what's going to happen? And everybody's been saying it all since Sunday. What's going to happen when they play teams that sit in and there's no room to count it? You're going to have to, you're gonna have to break them down. You're going to have to unlock them. It's not going to happen. Or you play against a team that is good against the counter. You know, somebody like City. You're not going to have a chance. But uh, even, even Liverpool, you know, even Liverpool, uh, because they sit, sit for the counter as well. So it's going to be 0-0. <laughs> you know, and I think we should, I, I fancy our chance against them as well. But yeah, so then all of a sudden you turn around and today we had the uh, Super Cup in Istanbul between the UEFA Cup champions, Chelsea, um, Europa, League, Europa League champions, Chelsea, who beat us in the final um, a few months ago. And then the Champions League, uh, the European champions, Liverpool, yeah? So um, that was a pretty good game. And now Frank Lampard made some changes. He brought in... He brought in... Ngolo Kante to play alongside uh, Jorginho. And then Kovacic kind of got more of a license to get forward more. Then he started with the American, Christian Pulisic on the left, with Pedro on the right. And then up front was Olivier Giroud, who should have started at Old Trafford. Um, the back four stayed the same. Um, and Chelsea looked good, man. They looked good. Uh, Liverpool looked tired or whatever. That's what all the Liverpool fans are saying. Um, and then, you know, Pulisic had a good first half. He played well in the match. He he set Giroud free. Giroud scores 1-0 to Chelsea. Um, and then, you know, everybody's saying now that, like, you know, Roberto Firmino came on and was, uh, he showed how he's irreplaceable and he was a, a game changer. And absolutely he was. And he is irreplaceable. Because somebody like... Um, Somebody like uh, Firmino is very valuable and very important in a setup like Liverpool's because Liverpool have no creator in midfield. So their front men have to be number 10s in a way. And that's what say, uh, um, Sadio Mane is. That's what Firmino is. And then Salah is just fast. Salah was trash today. Salah is not that great in my opinion. But he was he was at bang average. But when you have Sadio Mane and Firmino, that's where their attack really comes from. You have to really deal with those guys. And when those guys are on, they create space for Salah to go, you know, and just have opportunity to run at somebody one on one and score a goal. But you know, that's 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 their that's their uh, that's their attack. And he came on, made a difference, helped to free Mane to make it one one. Then in extra time, freedom again. Mane makes it 2-1. Then the penalty came. You know, I do want to say that the officiating crew was uh, an all-ladies uh, team. And they did a good job. I think it was the same team that ref the Women's World Cup final between the United States and the Netherlands. Um, and uh, I made a joke on one of these outlets, uh, social media outlets. And I said, hope she doesn't give a dodgy penalty in the game. And she ends up giving a dodgy penalty in the game. But I, I could understand why she gave it. In, in in today's football, if you go near a player too close and you breathe on him, falls down, they're going to give a pen. So um, Adrian came out, slid, kind of touched, 
uh, Abraham a little bit. They gave the penalty. Jorginho scores the pen, 2-2, and then the game ends up going to penalties. Um, but I here's the thing, though. Um, Chelsea, Frank Lampard, Chelsea may not have had a transfer window this summer, and I don't think they get January either. They don't get January. Um, but I tell you what, though, they've got players over there. They've got players over there, and I think if Frank does things right, they can be a real problem. They can really be a real problem. So it's not it, – Arsenal cannot think that, you know, um, we're going to – it's going to be, you know, an, an, uh, an easy uh, attempt at, at trying to get top four and think that United aren't good enough or Chelsea aren't good enough. Yo, those teams are going to be right there. They're going to be right there. They're gonna, it's going to be difficult because Chelsea's got a squad, man, and Frank's going it, to it, – it's having them play a bit. You know what I mean? I think that Ungolo Kante is going to be huge for them. Um, if they can sort out their, their center back parent, I think when Rudiger becomes available, that'll make them stronger. Um, they, they could lack a bit of experience, but um, with those other guys in the team, Giroud has to be a leading, uh, leading player in this team for Chelsea um, if they're going to be successful. And they keep trying to go with Abraham. I think Abraham is two seasons off, three seasons off from being the guy he, he, he can be. So... Giroud needs to be that guy that 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 stopgap till that comes to fruition for Abraham, but I think that they've got players. Cause think about it, they've got uh, Bakayoko still in the team. Marco Van Ginkel has come back from loan from all those years on loan. And don't sleep on that guy, Marco Van Ginkel. He can play. Um, you know they've brought back a lot. They, they, I mean they got Pulisic in in in, in January. Um, uh, they've got this kid. They got the kid Mason Mount back. You know, they've got some players, man. They've got some players. Willian is going to come back from injury. They're going to be all right. This guy, Emerson, at left back is good. Kepa's a good goalkeeper. They're going to be all right. They're going to be all right. They're going to be a real... So, that, so what? long story short, that 4-0 drubbing they got at Old Trafford, people need to just pump your brakes. Man United is not that good. Chelsea's not that bad. Those two teams is going to be a dogfight. Chelsea, United... Arsenal, we want to pull Tottenham back into it, yeah, and I think we can even pull Liverpool back into it because out of all those teams that I've mentioned, clearly City is a miles ahead of everyone. But I think Liverpool can be brought back into the mix. I think Tottenham can be brought back into the mix with Chelsea, Arsenal, and United to get into that Champions League places. And 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 if if anybody can survive that fight and and try to challenge City for the for the league title, but um. Those guys are, uh, those are Chelsea's not bad, man. Chelsea's not bad. So all my Gunners, you know, we've got to be ready. Chelsea's not that bad. And us getting David Luiz has not hurt them at all. They've got young center backs over there who can who are better than him. I think, I, honestly, I think that the, I, 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 right now the way things look, if everybody can get fit, David Luiz is not playing in our big games. You're still going to have Socrates and holding Socrates and, and Chambers. Because Chambers is looking good right now. You know, I didn't think that was going to be the case. But he's looking good right now. And I don't trust David Luiz. I think that we just, the, the you know, we just brought him in because he's Brazilian. And Edu brought him one of his boys. You know, but he's not that good, man. He's he's never been that good. He's a liability. He's just like, he's just like Mustafi. You know, and, I, and, and I've said before in other social media outlets, I, I kind of like Mustafi. He just makes that, he's just... He's just good for that one mistake that could be that can be catastrophic and it sucks. But I tell you, um the Super Cup was good. Um you know, um and, and you know, just thinking about the Super Cup and how it ended on penalties, people are showing posts that uh, Adriano was off his line when he saved uh the deciding penalty from Abraham. And um VAR so stupid. I don't think it's a big deal. He was just off the line. If the referee caught it, great. He didn't catch it, whatever. It would have ruined the whole moment because Adrian needed that as he's going to be playing a lot more games for Liverpool before Alisson comes back from injury. So um, it would have been it would have been sad if they had, you know, stopped the celebration and said, hey, you know what? He was off the line. Make him do it again. Um, but VAR is a bit of a joke because, I mean, they say oh, it always gets it right. But we're not trying to get it always right. We want the, the we want the natural feeling of the game. We want the glaring errors to be sorted out. 
But for me, I can live with the glaring errors. You know what I mean? Liverpool were able to challenge United, uh, challenge City for the league title last last season, last campaign, because they scored a lot of offside goals. <laughs> if Liverpool, if VAR was in the league last year, Liverpool would have ended up fourth, because they would have lost a lot of them games when they were at the Olympic Stadium against West Ham, and the dudes were offside by miles, but the referees missed it, and that's what kept the title race going. But now with VAR. That offside that they called on City, that combination, and they said that um, Raheem Sterling's shoulder, his armpit was just offside, That that's tough, dude. And honestly, the referees didn't see it. The West Ham players did not complain. But because it's a goal and we have VAR, they check all the, the goals and goal-scoring opportunities to try to find any type of in, in, infringement, you know, infraction. And I tell you what, I tell you what, they can use that to to minimize the amount because they know City's going to win, but instead of winning six seven zero, oh, they might only win three zero oh, or three one, and that keeps the goal differential close so somebody can can stay close to them because that City team is frightening. So again, I think VAR is useless. It it shouldn't be in the game, but you know, the powers that be like it, and apparently everybody's like, oh, it's never wrong. It's never wrong. It's not about it being right or wrong. It's about how is it affecting the game. It, it, it kills momentum. It kills the natural buzz of, 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 of a live action moment. You know, we, we always have to stop and check and see. Look over our shoulder. Is it going to stand? All that stuff. It's stupid, man. It's stupid. So, you know, I'm glad that they missed the um, Adrian off the line against Tammy Aram. Because it wasn't, it wasn't a good penalty anyway. So, Adrian should have saved it. And he did. So... That's how I see it, man. That's how I see it. I think that um, I think that uh, the Premier League is gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good season. Um, I'm hoping that Arsenal can really make a push and and make us proud. Uh, we play Burnley next at home. I think being at home, we should open a can of whoop ass on them a little bit and and give it to them a little bit. Even though they had a bright start to the season, I think they beat up on somebody. They beat up on Southampton, three nothing or something like that. That guy Ashley Barnes, man, he got two goals. He's he's a wind up merchant. That guy, ugh. But we're gonna be at home, so we should be able to handle them. But they'll be tough, but we should be able to get the results. Hopefully, Laka will be fully fit, so we can get the start alongside Obama Yang. And if if Pepe can come along, too sweet. But I tell you what, though, Reese Nelson was fire. He was fire at, at, at Sir James Park. So that's where I'm at with it right now. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good season. I'm excited, as I said. But let let me know what you think of uh, Chelsea squad, the Super Cup final that was, that took place today, and um, and let me know what you think of what's gonna happen this weekend. Uh, I think Man City is playing. They're hosting uh, Tottenham. I think they're gonna give it to Tottenham because they're really good. They're gonna give it to Tottenham, and uh, we should we should uh, handle Burnley. And we'll go from there. But let me know what you think of the Super Cup, of VAR, and, uh, you know, um, the the first round of matches. And, and let me, you know, we just chat it up, talk footy, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm going to go play some FIFA right now because I love that stuff. It's great. But, uh, yeah, so uh, subscribe at the bottom, leave a comment, and we'll be back. All right? FCRB TV. Ciao.